Hey everyone, Reaper here again with another video. This time I thought I would focus on making a video with some uh, focusing on second appearances. Now I don't have, I have like a short stack here of books that I think um, some characters make their second appearance in, which I think are more affordable than the first appearances, obviously. That's the way it usually goes. So, but basically the point of this video is for those that may not be able to afford or even want to spend a certain amount of money on a first appearance, you might be happy with getting a second appearance because I do think sometimes second appearances are a little underrated. Now, the value of this short stack, you know, between books, some of them are a little more money than others and some are quite affordable. So let's start off. I know, uh, I think what this has been going on for the last year the first appearance of the Spider-Man Noir. You know, that, that book shot up from $2.50 when I bought it a couple years ago to, I think, a $100 book. Well, if you don't really feel like spending that kind of money on the first appearance of Spider-Man Noir, but you're still interested in the character and all of that, you can try getting his second appearance, which is in Spider-Man Noir number two. I think the value of this book, I, I don't have the exact number, but, from what, but I do believe the value of this book is significantly lower than his first appearance. If you're spending $100 on his first appearance, it's most likely this book, I think, is probably like $25. High grade, okay? You don't have to get a beater copy to enjoy the second appearance of what I think to be a pretty cool character. I think that idea is pretty cool. I know Marvel tried a lot of different things. What was that? Marvel 1602 or whatever. I thought it was just dumb. And I don't even really like the Ultimate Universe that much, although there are some good things about the Ultimate Universe. But I do think what they did with Noir, I thought that was pretty cool. I know even though that belongs to the multiverse. So... I know another one that really popped up in value over the last couple of years was uh, the Mighty Thor 337, the first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. I don't think it's terribly expensive. I mean, sure, if you want a 9698, then you're talking a lot more money. But if you're not really interested in getting like the 90s that I think, what are they? A couple hundred bucks, maybe? You can always start with. Beta Ray Bill's second appearance. And this is a pretty cool cover, too. We know the, the first one, the 337 by Walt Simonson, is a classic cover. And this is another, I think, good cover. It may not be as classic as the 337, but I still think it's pretty cool. It shows action, them fighting over uh, the hammer, and it's not as expensive as uh, Beta Ray Bill's first appearance. So that's pretty cool. Another one here. Uh, Marvel Premiere 48. This is the second appearance of Scott Lang as Ant-Man. Now, again, you know, I don't think the first appearance of Scott Lang or the first appearance of Scott Lang as Ant-Man is something that's going to break the bank, even in a higher grade, like we're talking like 909294. But if you're looking for fairly affordable second appearances, such as this one. You could probably find these in long boxes at cons or even at your local comic book store. Whereas I think that the first appearance of Scott Lang, the first appearance of Scott Lang as Ant-Man, you'll probably find that on the wall. But this you'll probably, I would imagine, find this in a long box for like maybe 25 bucks. I mean, not a 9.8, of course. But it's still a very f affordable second appearance. It's still pretty cool to have. Here's another... Uh, second appearance. Now my copy is probably like, what is it, a 4.0, but an affordable second appearance. Now, you know, I was talking earlier about the difference between Beta Ray Bill and his second appearance, Scott Lang and his second appearance. You know, those are cases where the first appearances are not that expensive, but can be pricey, depending on the grade. Well, here's an example of a second appearance that is much cheaper even in a higher grade than the first appearance, what we have here, Amazing Spider-Man 44, the second appearance of the Lizard. Okay, like I said, I have a 4.0. Again, that's not something that's going to break the bank. But if you have like a 7.5, an 8.0, sure, it's going to be probably a couple hundred hours. But that's still nothing, nothing compared to like a 3.0 or a 4.0 Amazing Spider-Man 6, which is his first appearance. So this is still a pretty cool second appearance to have. 
Okay, and again, I think it's one of those that you'll find in a long box. I mean, some dealers may have that up on the wall, depending on the grade and all that, but it's still a pretty good, pretty good buy. And not long after that, the second appearance of the Kingpin. This is another one that you'll probably find in a long box. If the classic John Romita Amazing Spider-Man 50 cover, which is the first appearance of the Kingpin, is a little too much or more than you what you want to spend on a first appearance at whatever moment. Uh, that that you're in, you can always get his second appearance. And I like this cover. I've always loved this cover. This is a pretty cool cover too. You get to see it's a, it's the first uh, cover appearance of the Kingpin. So um, again, this is not a book that's going to break the bank, and it's still a pretty cool cover and an important second appearance. Moving right along, let's go with some X-Men, Silver Age, X-Men 15, the second appearance of the Sentinels. Now, it does happen to be the first appearance of the Master Mold, but I don't think that's really that big of a deal as the Sentinels. So here we go, another affordable copy. This is my copy, is like a 4.5, 5.0. So again, this is nothing that's going to break the bank. What is this, like a $40 book? If that, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, whatever it is. Um, still... A decent amount less than a 14. And again, I do believe this is a book you'll find in a long box. And most of these books here, most of them, not all of them, but most of the books I'm showing you in this video, they are not necessarily wall books. They are second appearances that you can find in your local comic book store, in their long boxes or short boxes, and the same thing at conventions. And again, they're not that expensive and pretty cool to have. You have a nice Silver Age X-Men book here. Here's another one. The first appearance is, you know, it's a, it's, it's a lot more than the second appearance. And it's almost like an example with the lizard, although not as valuable as the lizard. Amazing Spider-Man uh, 102, the second appearance of Morbius. I know Patrick was telling me that he likes this one better than the first appearance. I like both. But this one has a lot of good stuff in it, too. I really do. Look, I... um. It's an affordable second appearance of Morbius. If you like Morbius, but you don't want to spend the outrageous amount of money on getting a high-grade copy or even a mid-grade copy for that book right now because it is still pretty hot. And it's probably going to last up until the movie comes out. And depending on what happens in the movie, you, then you could follow. But if you want something close to his first appearance when it comes to his second appearance, again, this is a book you could probably find in a long box. And it is quite affordable, even in nicer grades. Uh, my copy's probably like a 6.0. Um, so it's not terribly high grade, but it's not terribly low grade either. It's, I can't imagine this book being more than like maybe 50 bucks. I don't know. I haven't checked recently. I've had it for a couple of years, but I think it's pretty affordable. Um, I will admit, though, Marvel, you know, the frames that they were doing in the early 70s, never been a fan of them. I know Luke Cage has it, the um, um, first Ghost Rider, uh, Bronze Age Ghost Rider, and many other books, the uh, Furry Beast, all that. Uh, classic first appearances from the Bronze Age um, have this uh, frame. I don't like it. I've never liked the frames. That's just me going off, but I'm just digressing. Uh, since I have uh, an example to show you, but never a big fan. And honestly, I'm not a fan of that cover, the 102. I'm not a big fan of Morbius's ass right in your face. Um, or the yellow building background. I know I'm almost like talking you down from getting it, but it's uh, the story's good. Um, it's a cool second appearance, and I do like Morbius. And I like the lizard, too. So it's a pretty cool book to own, but I wasn't a big fan of the cover or the frame uh, style. Here we go. Again, we get back to Luther Manning. He's a, he seems to be in almost all my videos now <laughs> when I'm talking about him. But a second appearance, right? Second appearance of Man Bat. Man Bat can be pretty pricey, even in mid-grade. Low-grade, I don't know. I mean, low-grade Man Bat 3.0, 4.0, I think that might cost you like 100 bucks. But, you know, if you spring a little bit more for it, you get a nicer copy. But when you get to those 8s, and those nines, the book gets very pricey. But here we have an example. My copy, I don't, I think my copy is like a 7.0, 8.0 maybe. So it's not a real low grade copy, but it's not a super stellar high grade copy either. But a copy like this, I don't think it's going to cost you more than 50 bucks. It's a great cover too. You know, unlike the last book I showed you where I didn't like the cover, this is a great cover. Lantern cover up against the water, man bat swooping in against the moon. Great, great 
great cover. Um, and it's a pretty cool character and a cool second appearance. Uh, a couple more. Now this is where it gets a little pricey when it comes to second appearances, you know. Uh, so not as affordable as the last, uh, you know, most of the books I've been showing, but still cool to have. Okay, and still, in my opinion, well, not just my opinion, fact, uh, significantly um, less money than the first appearances. Journey into Mystery 84. I have a 4.0 copy. Um, second appearance of Thor. I know it's the first appearance of Jane Foster, but I think more importantly, it's the second appearance of Thor. Okay, now I know this book has been getting hot, um, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, before because of Jane Foster, female Thor, Thor, Love and Thunder movie, all that stuff. But still, it's still significantly, significantly cheaper than a 4.0 Journey into Mystery 83. Okay? You might spend, uh, I don't know how much a 4.0 goes for, to be quite honest. It might cost you upwards of $500. That's a lot of money. But how much does a 4.0 Journey into Mystery 83 cost you? I would say upwards of four grand. <laughs> Big difference, right? And still, I like the cover. I think it's a pretty cool cover. Pretty decent story. And um, second appearance of Thor. Hey, whatever floats your boat, right? When it comes to what you can afford or what you're willing to spend. Now, the last one for this, now there's plenty others, plenty others in my collection that I just was too lazy to think about or even look for. I just grabbed ones that were... Uh, within arm's reach. But here's one that I've always been fond of and significantly less money than the first appearance. X-Men number two. You have your Fantastic Four number twos, you have your Tales of Suspense 40s, your Journey into Mystery 84s. Pricey books, but nowhere near the value of the first appearances. And the first appearance, now this is a 6.5. This will probably run you... 700 750 a lot of money but it's the second appearance of the x-men what's the seven what's a what's a six five x-men number one i don't know i really don't know how much it is but i'm willing to bet you it's probably around 10 grand eight or nine eight nine ten grand it's not cheap even a 3.0 x-men number one is going to cost you probably over four grand that's a lot and for those of you that don't want to spend that kind of money, but you, you can have the second appearance. Although not as great as the first appearance, but still pretty good. And I've always had a fascination with this cover. I love this cover. Even though The Vanisher never was that big of a deal. It's just the first appearance of The Vanisher, in case anyone cares. Um, but more importantly, it's second appearance of X-Men. And I think it's a great cover. You know, them against the White House. Them up against the White House. A uh, uh, White House lawn or close to the White House lawn or whatever. Pretty cool. Pretty cool to have. Well, that, my friends, is a bunch of second appearances that you may want to add to your collection if for whatever reason you can't get the first appearances. I still think that they're pretty cool and there are a ton of others out there. Some of which I have, like I said, that I didn't grab and some I don't have. But um, usually those second appearances are significantly, significantly, not just less money, significantly less money than the first appearance and still good to have and can be considered underrated. Thank you for watching. Take care.